in the sanctuary because he is our God. He is our King and he is our all in all. Stand on your feet and put a hand raised on that, that he is God. And besides him, there is no other. We lift him up in this place tonight because he is God. Because he is God. He is our Father. And we say thank you all tonight that you have allowed us to come into this place and be able to do the thing that you have assigned us to do. God, we bless you in the house tonight. And before Minister Angela comes, we're just going to go to the throne of grace first. She's preparing for our scripture. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come on tonight to thank you, to honor you, God, for being so good and being so kind to us. Oh, God, as we go forth in this, this worship experience, God, we want you to know that we will lift you up and we will lift you high in the atmosphere. Oh God, we ask you to come now. Come now. We ask for your visitation, God, that we may do the work that you have assigned us to do. And on tonight, we give you glory and we give you honor because it's due unto you. We don't take this week for granted, oh God. We don't take this week for granted, oh God, because you saw fit <laughs> for Pilate to say, I find no fault in him. Bring me some water and let me wash my hands. Oh God, on tonight, we ask you to wash our hands. <laughs> Cleanse us through and through, oh God, that you, you will be magnified in our life. You will be glorified in our life. And we will edify your body. God, we thank you. And we honor you, oh God. For it is in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ I do pray. Amen. High and lifted up in all, the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all, the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all, the earth is who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we exalt your name. Oh, high and lifted up in all, the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all, the earth is who you are. And all the earth is who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Lord, we exalt your name. Let's put those hands together. High and lifted up in all the earth is who you I gave you the word high and lifted up in all the earth is who you are high and lifted up in all the earth is who you are Lord we exalt your name Lord we exalt your name high and lifted up in all the earth is who you are High and lifted up in all the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all the earth is who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Oh, Lord, we exalt your name. High and lifted up in, in all the earth is who you are. High and lifted up in all. The earth is who you are. Oh, high and lifted up in all. The earth is who you are. Lord, we exalt your name. Hey, Lord, we exalt your name. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. High and lifted up. Praise you, oh Lord, we praise you. High and 
Father. Minister, Minister Angela is coming with our scripture on tonight. Praise the Lord, saints. The word of God on this evening will be coming from Ephesians 4, verse 1 through 7. Ephesians 4, verse 1 through 7. I will be reading from the English Standard Version. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, the one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. The word of God for the people of God, amen. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Yeah. 
pastor is coming at this time. limp over there with one shoe on and one shoe on oh praise his name come on open your mouth one time and put your hands together one time and give God a shout of thanksgiving for one more day a Monday in the Lord this is holy week and we started it right I'm still on a high from yesterday all day my soul is satisfied my soul is charged and recharged and i am ready tonight for a monday night word please be seated we greet you tonight and we're thankful this has been an amazing month of word and word and word on top of word and this has been an amazing and an exciting time for new hope as we have heard from our amazing ministers preachers of the gospel can we celebrate them tonight and those of you that are worshiping online tonight thank you for your presence thank you for being a part of this wonderful experience all month many of us have been in some serious prayer as we know uh, these 40 days that we have been in consecration we've been reading our Lent devotional every day and we've been infusing ourselves with scripture and with lessons to bring us closer and to draw us nearer uh, to the precious Lord to the cross where thou has died draw me nearer nearer precious Lord to thy precious bleeding side so it's been great I have been filled and I am just so thankful and tonight sadly uh, we come to the culmination of our Monday night March manifest and then we've got Wednesday uh, this month we've got one more Wednesday that our ministers uh, will teach um, but I have thoroughly been blessed and I'm so grateful that God has created this space to give uh, our preachers opportunity to share the word of God to exercise their gifts the Bible says that your gift will make room for you and that you don't have to uh, fight for the room for the room will be made you don't have to connive or scheme to get platform or to get place because God will open it up because what's for you is for you and can't nobody take it from you so I'm so grateful for that and thankful I do want to thank tonight I want to thank our musicians for being here every Monday night amen I want to thank our media ministry Brother Marquan and I meet for being here every Monday night, our security, our ushers being here every Monday night, and to all of you that have taken the time uh, to come on Monday nights. I know a lot of times Monday is hard for the saints of God because we done been in church all day on Sunday, and then some of, some of you have to get up and go to work on Monday, and then it's rough. But I tell you what, God honors sacrifice. He honors sacrifice. And when you press, especially when you don't feel like it, and it's a sacrifice, God will bless you with more than you imagine and more than you asked for and even more than you expected. So I know there's a blessing in the present and I am grateful for that. Um, and listen, if you have a gift tonight, if you have an offering tonight, you can just bring it. You can bring it. I think there's some baskets back there. Buddy, go back there. Or some, see if there's a basket right there on that table in there. Go right in there. Go with, go with Minister Lydia. Uh -huh. Go with there and see if we have a basket. You can always do it online. You can give through Cash App, Dollar Sign, New Hope Nation. You can give through Givelify. Just put on there. Um, you can put in MM if you want to in the comments. So we'll know that's March Manifest. Perfect. That's wonderful. I'm going to have to give electronically because I don't think I brought any cash with me. So I'll give electronically. But if you have something that you want to give and you bring, bring it right here. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Minister Lydia. Thank you, buddy. I'm going to be trusty buddy tonight. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And you can just bring it from wherever you are. If you're online, you can certainly be a part. Trustee Warren, I'm so sorry. I see you here and I'm just saying, I, please forgive me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Trusty Warren will take it. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. What a blessing we had on yesterday. I tell you, God just spoke to us in a mighty, mighty way and displayed his power like only he could. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to be here tonight. Amen. 
Amen. Got into a car accident today, but God blessed in a mighty way. I dropped my car off at the um, dealer to get some work done. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm having battery issues or whatever. And so Mercedes will always call an Uber for you to get you back home so they don't have to worry about anybody taking. And so while on Independence getting ready to get on to 277, a car was about to miss the turn and he decided at the last second that he was not going to miss it no matter if there was a car coming and rammed us right on over um, uh, almost off the road but uh, when you have the angels that are dispatched to cover you and to keep you and to keep you safe and I knew that the devil got mad yesterday Ah. and so you know when you make the devil mad he got to try to find a way uh, to eliminate you but no weapon that is formed against us will prosper and so you know, we were safe the car ran the car did not stop and so the uber driver decided to try to engage in a high speed chase on to 77 and so I told him, I said, look, I said, you don't know if they got a gun in that car. You don't know why I said, get close enough for me to get a picture of the license plate. And I took a picture of the license plate and we go, I said, all right, now you pull over and let me out. <laughs> and we, we stopped and we called the police and, and, uh, and they took it from there. But, but um, when, when we, think it not strange. That's what the Bible says. Think it not strange. When you see these fiery darts and these uh, trials and these things to attempt to destroy you, when you are making impact in the kingdom, you are on Satan's hit list. There are a few of us in here, but there are a few of us close enough to touch somebody. Just touch them and tell them, I'm on Satan's hit list. <laughs> but I'm also on God's watch list. And he's watching over me. I'm on Satan's hit list, but I'm on God's watch list. And if he watches over a sparrow, then I know. That's all I got. That's all I got. That he watches over me. I know it without a shadow of a doubt. And so I'm grateful for that. So it's good to be here. I'm ready to hear a word from the Lord tonight. I'm here ready to hear a word from the Lord. And we've got two amazing preachers. Our first preacher... Reverend Cook is one whom God sent to our ministry, right? Reverend Cook, you on the preach tonight, aren't you, Reverend? You on the preach? You ain't on the preach tonight. I thought you was on the. I saw your face on the flyer. Is his face on the flyer? All right. Well, listen. What you gonna do? You ain't. Get, what you gonna do is you gonna just come up here and you gonna just testify or whatever the Lord put on your heart to do. You gonna do it because I know as a preacher, God gave you something. Isn't that right? amen the lord sent him to us and he knew what i needed he knew what i was praying for because i wanted i wanted a preacher slash teacher someone who would come in ready and someone who would come in on fire come in with zeal and come in with the anointing and when reverend cook got here he got here and jumped in like he was already in and I love that fire, that fervor, that zeal, as well as that humility. And God is using him in a very powerful capacity to teach our Wednesday noonday Bible study. I was able to share on last Wednesday in that Bible study myself, Sister Charlene, Minister Lydia was there on last Wednesday. And uh, we just had a great time in the Lord. And uh, I am so excited. Uh, that God has brought him to the New Hope Nation and I am also excited about what is to come because uh, this is not where he will level off but he is going to keep going higher and higher in the word and in the spirit so I'm going to ask him to come in his own way and just share with us whatever God is putting on your heart in this moment and after he will come then we will hear a word from our own elder marshall kennedy whom i have known well over 15 years 
and God blessed her uh, to be a part of our ministry in Weldon, North Carolina. She came as a licentiate minister and she made history in Weldon as one of the five females that made the first females ordained in the 150 year history of that church. And so I am so grateful that she was a part of the fantastic five as I call them. And God led her to this ministry and led her uh, in this direction and she has been running ever since. And so after Reverend Cook will come in his own way, then Elder Marshall Kennedy will come in her own way. Would you receive Reverend Cook at this time as he comes in his own way? Amen. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind schedule. I didn't know I was supposed to come tonight. But, but that's that's okay, you know. Yeah, God brought me out anyway. Yes, He did. Hallelujah. Yeah, we've been having a pretty good time in Bible study, and God sent me this way, and He showed me that it's gonna really increase, and we we, we gonna go higher and higher. Yes, yes we are. And Pastor, I'm sort of reminded yesterday. When you said that uh, everything we got belongs to God. Everything. Everything. There's nothing you have that's yours. Everything you have belongs to God. And I can give you a testimony on that. I can remember when, back some years ago, when I was a member of this church called Bethesda Missionary Baptist Church, down in a little town called Society Hill, South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> Society Hill, South Carolina. And for some strange reason, see, my wife and I, former wife, we always had a ritual where myself and the boys, we would go to church ahead of her so we get, you know, the Sunday school and everything. And she prepared our dinner. After she get the, get the dinner prepared, she would come. But this particular Sunday, and New Year's we're getting ready to come in, this particular Sunday we happened to go together, her and I. And we had just installed a brand new pastor at the church. And the pastor we installed, he had seven boys. And they decided not to go back home to something South Carolina where he lived. They decided that they would stay at the church in the, the family life center until later on that night for watch care to bring in New Year's. And for some particular reason, my wife and I, we were riding along. And all of a sudden, I heard this voice say, Now why did you invite that? Why did you invite that pastor up to your house? Regardless of whether he said yes or no, you should have still invited him up to your house. And I couldn't say a word. And you know, she didn't hear a thing. And then that voice spoke again. And it said, anyway, that place up there is not yours, it's mine. And you're going to only be here for a short period of time anyway. It's mine. So, when you spoke yesterday, Pastor, about that everything belongs to God, it hit me so hard. Because, yes, what I do, the teaching I do, it comes from all the experiences, just like David. You know, the dealings I had with God, how he talked to me, how he come to me in dreams, warned me of things ahead. And by me working in construction, he would come and tell me and show me and dream the strange people I'll be working with. <laughs> yeah, getting me prepared. Yeah. See, that, that's, that's the way God operates when you have a good personal relationship with him. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's how he operates. He'll never lead you in the blind. And when he sends you somewhere, he got you prepared. You're going to always be prepared. 
Yeah, that's how God operates. And I had to take that. And I was, I was listening. And I would go to bed thinking, and say, now, God, this, this voice told me that I was going to only be here for a short time. And this beautiful place, I had took, got calluses on my hands now. I, I, I took this place that looked like a wilderness and turned it into a beautiful place. Yes. The people would come from Detroit, Michigan, uh, different places in Ohio, headed to the beach, coming through on Highway Number Nine. Yeah, and on the way, they was, they was, if they would see me out there in my yard or down by the pond, I had made, they would stop. And they would ask me, say, uh, hey, how you doing, sir? Is this your place? I said, yeah. He say, and they would say, can I just take a trip? I just like to just walk up that hill right. because of all the beautiful flowers and everything. And, and, and even some of the people that came that was, was residents there would come and they would go down by the pond and they would stand there for a while and they would sit down and they and they would tell me, say, I can feel the spirit of God, the peace of God here. Yeah. You know. But all was still the same. It was God, please. It wasn't man. Just like he told Adam when he put him in the garden. He said, I want you to keep it and address it. You see, what we have is not ours, but God gave it to us to keep it and dress it. Yes, yes. yes. that's what we're supposed to do. You know, it makes me, it upsets me a lot when I see where people come by and they throw garbage everywhere and this and that and everything, not, not realizing that they're going to have to give an answer for that. They're going to have to answer to God. Because everything God made, the Bible says what? It's good. Yeah. It's not only good, it's beautiful. Yes, it is. Yeah. And everywhere we go and everything we do and everything that he blesses us with, we're supposed to take good care of it. Right. Take good care of it. And when we do that, not only will we be satisfied, but God will be satisfied too. That's right. So like you said, Pastor, on yesterday, Everything that we have, it comes from God. Yeah. Every blessing we get, it comes from God. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the devil will not bless you in a good way. Mm, right. Now, if he bless you, you better look out. <laughs> you better look out. <laughs> yeah, if he bless you, you better, you better, you better be on God. Because something's getting ready to happen. Yes, it is. And also, like you said, Pastor, when we, when we do good deeds, when we lift up the atmosphere, change the atmosphere, just like we did yesterday, Lord have mercy. Boy, that little hand tamarind I got, I just tore it up yesterday. I was just, just tearing it up back there yesterday. Lord. Y'all don't know. I was praising the Lord yesterday. I'm telling you. Good God of mine. And any time you, 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 you bless God and you bless somebody else, oh, Satan is on the way. He, he's coming some kind of way to attack you. And he attacked me today. That's why I was back there with that mask on. He attacked me today. But I knew it was coming. But even in the midst of that, in the midst of it, I'm not going to stop. He can't turn me around. Yeah. Like the song say, if you can't help me, please don't block me. Move out of my way. Don't try and stop me. I got a race to run, and I'm running by faith at the finishing line. I'll see your face. Listen, I've been running for Jesus a long, long time, running both night and day. 
I got a few more hills than mountains to climb before I reach the finishing line. Cause you can't help me. Please don't stop me. Move out of my way. Don't try and block me. I got a race to run. And I'm running by faith. And at the finishing line, I'll see God pay. Amen. Well, oh, praise his name. Come on, bless the Lord for Reverend Cook tonight. I ain't heard that one in a long time. I love that. I came up on that kind of singing right there. Don't stop me. Move out of my way. Don't try to block me. Got a race to run. Woo! At the finishing line, I'm going to see God's face. Praise the name of our God. Thank you so much, Reverend Cook. Thank God. But listen, when you got the Holy Ghost, the Lord will give you what to say, when to say it. And I thank God for him. God bless you. Amen. We ain't got to sing. But Reverend Cook sang and prepared us for our next preacher tonight. Would you receive our own Elder Marshall Kennedy? Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Hallelujah. If you can't help me, please don't try to stop me. Because why? We got a race to run. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Well, I am certainly glad you are here. I'm certainly glad I am here. And we bless God for another opportunity. Isn't it good? <laughs> you know I'm a praiser so come on help me lift him up if he done anything for you today it's time right now to say thank you hallelujah we bless your name God at all times you're the sovereign wonderful savior and always worthy to be praised always worthy to be lifted up always worthy to be glorified no matter what we're still happy in Jesus because why he's been good in spite of it all he's a good God hallelujah hallelujah hey I feel good about it I'm glad about it anybody glad to be one of his hallelujah Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for choosing us. Hallelujah. We couldn't choose you unless you chose us. So we bless your name, God. Oh, yeah, we came ready on fire. Hey, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Stay happy in Jesus. Amen. Ain't it good? Hey. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hey, oh, yes. Oh, God, yes, yes, yes. We bless him because he had prepared a way for us even before we knew we existed. Even before the foundation of this earth. He already had made a way. Glory.
remember. And you might not know, but he made you to praise him. That's why you're here, to give him a praise. Not to look at me, not to glorify pastor, but to give your God the praise. That's why he created you. That's why you made it through the millions that were swimming with you. You connected because he said, thou want to praise me. He said, thou want to give me glory. He said, thou want to lift me up. He said, yes to you. Yes, yes, yes. Woo, yes, yes. And you ought to give him a yes. Somebody say yes, Lord. Open your mouth. All right, well, we certainly give honor to that God that created us. We bless your holy name, Lord. We are very grateful to be here today in spite of all we've gone through this day. We are grateful and thankful to God. I want to start off by saying uh, to my beloved pastor, who is a mighty servant of the living God. Woo, he's a mighty servant leader to this great New Hope Nation. Glory to God, from whom all blessings flow. I love you, I honor you, I respect you for life, hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, and as mentioned all month long um, by your ministerial staff, we appreciate you, hallelujah. Amen, ministers. We appreciate you for just giving us this opportunity. And it's been consistent. Yes, it has. Year after year, he has afforded us the month of March for us to have the opportunity to share. And we are very, very grateful. Oh, God, we thank you. Um, you you're continuing to correct us. We thank God for that. And just allowing us or to let Jesus growth in us and through us but you don't stop us from working you allowed us to keep going and working in the house of the lord so we thank god for that you are a great man i wrote all this down but you know i can say it without it <laughs> you are a great man of god prophet preacher teacher uh yeah <laughs> and a good friend so i thank god for you may god come Continue to bless you, cover you, keep you, no matter who, what, trying to do anything to you, they might as well forget it. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, because we stand against it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, God. We're going to go right to Matthew chapter 28. Oh, my God, meditating and laboring in the word, he'll speak to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 28, starting with verse 18 through verse 20. Yes, we're reading from the English Standard Version. version. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even into the end of the world. Before I pray, I do want to thank God for all of you that are watching online, especially my family. God bless you. You know I love you you and I appreciate you taking the time out just to share with me tonight. Lord, let us pray. 
great God that you are. Hallelujah. Oh, great and mighty God, we praise your name. Lord, your greatness is unsearchable. Lord, we know you are near to all who call on you in truth, the heavy laden, oppressed, and burdened down, upholding us, Jesus. Generation after generation shall bless your name. Lord, we commend your works and declare your mighty acts. Lord, we shall speak your word tonight with authority and power and tell of your might and your awesome deeds. Lord, we declare that you are great, strong, and mighty faithful and true and we shall bless your name hallelujah father many are crushed down under the weight of this world but uh, our, your eyes are looking upon them now and our eyes are looking to you for help Lord, you help the hopeless, mend the heart, broken hearted. You lend to the trodden down and oppressed. Lord, you hear, hear my cry tonight and save lost souls. Reclaim the backslider and make ways where man has said there is no way possible for your will to be done. Why? Because you, God, are Lord. You are the Lord God. And besides you and that great name of Jesus, there is none other above you so father let the words of my mouth speak truth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight fill the temples who have gathered here and online god fill us both and let all flesh know and bless your holy name that you are God. Lord, we claim it in Jesus' name forever and ever and ever throughout eternity. In Jesus' mighty name, you may sit in his presence. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I, I just want to, first of all, say thank you to Reverend Cook. That was an inspiring song, and I hadn't heard it in a while either. That was all right. <laughs> so you're going to be joining the uh, male chorus too, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and I have been excited all month long listening to these preachers Wednesday night and Monday night. Some nights I was able to be here and some I wasn't, but I was online watching you. I thank God for you. I was excited. I said, go, girl, go. Go, boy, go. They were preaching and teaching, and I thank God for it. Matthew 28 records the events um, that we just read, uh, records the events following the resurrection of Jesus Christ as primarily focusing on the encounter between Jesus and his disciples, commonly known as the Great Commission. The primary focus conveys Jesus' final instructions to his disciples before his ascension into heaven. <clears throat> These instructions are meant to guide the disciples in their mission to spread the message of Jesus to the ends of the earth. The goal is for the disciples to go and make other disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but also teaching them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded resulting in kingdom bridge building and saving lives, which is the epitome of Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Our pastor's 2024 vision and theme for the New Hope Nation, building bridges and saving lives, hallelujah, as we, the New Hope family of believers, follow our servant leader, hallelujah, as he follows Christ's instructions, we win. Amen, hallelujah. We fulfill Christ's uh, mandate to the church to find, build, strengthen, correct, and prepare the church for Christ's second coming and soon return. Christ is coming back, you know. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But listen to what the Bible says in James 3. <clears throat> Not many of you should become teachers. That's what the word said. 
my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to brighten his whole body. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members staining the whole body setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell for every um, kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind but no human being can tame the tongue it is a restless evil full of deadly poison with it we bless the lord and father and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God from the same mouth come blessing and cursing my brothers these things ought not to be oh my God the passage in the gospel of Matthew 28 often referred to as the great commission represents Jesus's final instructions to his disciples before ascending to heaven and serves as a foundational mandate for Christian evangelism and discipleship encapsulating Jesus his number one his authority number two his mission number three his baptism number four his instructions for discipleship and teaching and number five his second coming and return and promise of his ongoing presence with his followers as they carry out his work in the world Let's talk about authority because Jesus declares that he possesses all authority in heaven and on earth, indicating his divine sovereignty and power over all creation. Let's talk about his mission because Jesus commissions his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, emphasizing the universality of his message and the inclusivity of his mission underscoring the importance of spreading the teachings of Jesus to people all of all backgrounds and cultures the baptism we'll talk about that uh, is because Jesus instructed his disciples to baptize new believers in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit symbolizing the invitation into the Christian faith and significance of spiritual rebirth and cleansing from sin his teaching is because Jesus emphasizes the importance of teaching new disciples to observe all that he has commanded this includes includes not only moral but ethical teaching but also spiritual principles and guidance for living a life in accordance with God's will uh, the promise of his presence because Jesus assures his disciples that he will be with them always even as he is with us always even to the end of the age this promise is his continual presence and eternal reign um, providing comfort guidance and reassurance to his followers as they and we embark on our mission to spread the gospel in this passage in Matthew 28 Jesus is speaking to the disciples shortly uh, before his ascension into heaven. He asserts that he has been given all authority in both heaven and again in earth. This declaration is significant because it affirms Jesus' divine authority and sovereignty over all creation. By stating that all authority has been given to him, he needed to say it because there are devils lurking. He needed to affirm it. Jesus' role as the ultimate authority in our lives and in the world. It also underscores the universal scope of Jesus' mission as he commissions us, his disciples, to go and make disciples of all nations, knowing that he holds authority over all aspects of creation. As we, his disciples, follow Jesus' instructions, 
We become actively involved in making more and more disciples, traveling to various regions, preaching and baptizing and teaching others about Jesus' teachings. We are expanding the Christian faith. We are building bridges and saving lives, a.k.a. fulfilling the Great Commission, which lays the foundation for global expansion for Christianity. Oh my God. As we follow our pastor's leadership and instruction, New Hope Nation is fulfilling the Great Commission with a kingdom mindset, expanding our thinking as well as our global reach into African territories and abroad. We, the New Hope Nation, as a family of Christian believers, are living out Christ's Great Commission, read in our hearing in Matthew 28, or in other words, words we are building bridges and saving lives hallelujah the disciples obedience to Jesus's command and our obedience to Jesus command plays a crucial role in the establishment and spread of Christian communities throughout our city throughout our nation and throughout the world our commitment to make disciples and teaching them the message of Jesus will result in profound transformations in the lives of uh, countless individuals from diverse backgrounds cultures cultures and nations we are responsible for and will be rewarded for the establishment of brought vibrant Christian communities and the formation of churches that continue to impact the world, creating a profound legacy and name for the New Hope Nation as kingdom bridge builders. Woo! The formation of Christian communities and churches will serve as a tangible expression of our discipleship and kingdom work in making disciples and teaching them, becoming a hub of spiritual growth, outreach, and mission, extending the message of Jesus Christ to nation upon nation and reaching more and more and more new territories and generation, building bridges across nations nations will demonstrate diversity and geographical and cultural boundary elimination. Believers from diverse backgrounds will come together in fellowship and unity, transcending social, ethnic, and political differences, unveiling unity in Christ's family, and serving as a powerful testimony to the transformative power of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 Paul emphatically proclaimed 1 Corinthians 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you stand and by which you are, are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance to the scripture that he was buried that he was raised on the third day in accordance to the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas then to the twelve then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time most of whom they ain't, they ain't no more alive but you know uh, that's what Paul said so I'm reading the word of whom are still alive though some have fallen asleep so then he appeared to James then to all the apostles last of all as to one untimely born he appeared also to me for I am the least of the apostles unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace toward me was not in vain on the contrary um 
I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. And like Paul, new hope, we must take upon us Paul's mindset and say, so we preach, so they will believe. The Great Commission has had a lasting impact on Christianity throughout history and it continues to be a central guiding principle for Christian missions and evangelism, inspiring believers and non-believers alike to convert and share the gospel with others and make disciples of all nations. So we must share with others to build bridges in the Great Commission and save lives from hell fire, from the pit, from the abyss, referenced in the book of Revelation, the eternal damnation and separation from the Father. Oh, what gloom designed especially for and intended uh, specifically for the devil and all who fell with him, a place of imprisonment and punishment for demonic entities including Satan formulated by God as part of a divine judgment against rebellious and evil forces not intended for mankind but will receive all who refuse Jesus as the Christ the Savior the Lord God has established his plan to save humanity and at its core his plan settles the account with ultimate victory of good over evil the triumph of light over darkness and the establishment of God's eternal kingdom establishing his sovereignty justice mercy love judgment redemption sacrifice victory newness and faithfulness and I inviting all people individually to respond in faith and obedience trusting in God's promises and participating in the unfolding of his divine purpose to redeem a man back to himself judgment and redemption both were poured out upon the earth as a response to sin and rebellion, intertwined with salvation to those who repent and turn to God. The lamb that was slain, by the way, he's alive. Oh, that sacrificial lamb, the purposeful death of our king and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ, the lamb of God, his shedding of his blood for the forgiveness of sins offers us the opportunity to be reconciled with God and receive eternal life. The victory over evil that I mentioned, which encompasses the final defeat of Satan and all forces of evil, despite our trials and tribulations, those faced by believers, the ultimate victory belongs to God. Established in the new Jerusalem, he will do. Yes, God will establish the new Jerusalem, a symbol of the renewed and perfected creation where God dwells with his people for eternity, signifying the ultimate fulfillment of God's promise to redeem and restore him to himself and fifthly the number of grace is a call to faithfulness God has called us to remain faithful amidst persecution and adversity and to those who endure to the end we are promised to share in the blessings of God's kingdom and eternal life While many are building dreams, homes, portfolios, careers, bank accounts, and the more. While this is good, there is nothing wrong with God blessing his and prospering his people. As a matter of fact, it is biblical. Yet there is a greater good. And that is saving lives and building kingdom bridges from sovereignty to humanity. God's divinely designed plan through our Christ Jesus and Lord we must adopt 
Jesus' great commission and example to be about our Father's business, building bridges and saving lives. This is crucial, critical, dangerous if overlooked and potentially life-threatening when ignored. We have a gospel mandate as we build new bridges and branch into new territories. We will portray the mission of the Christian church as one of spreading the message of Jesus Christ and making disciples, building bridges and saving lives as we go with the ultimate goal of bringing people into a relationship with God. The great commission is a great responsibility given to the church and oh how precious a purpose it is to be entrusted with a task straight from the mouth of God we are called and commanded to lead lost souls to salvation lead restless and resentful hearts to Christ captivate the misinformed and misdirected mind combat marginalism win the race, reach the goal, claim the prize, and press. We must continue to point mankind further and further into seeing divine truth, which grants unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that called us by his own glory and virtue and by that great name. Somebody say Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, said to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain again to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted us his precious and great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire for this reason make every effort to supply your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for these qualities are yours and are increasing that keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ for whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins therefore brothers and sisters be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and your election for if you practice these things you will never fail you will never fall hallelujah and glory be to God for in this way that will be richly provided to you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ therefore I attend intend always to remind you of these things of these qualities though you already know them and are established in the truth that you have I think it right as long as I am in this body to stir you up by way of reminder therefore we know our identity purpose and significance in the eyes of God we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do Romans 8 16 and 17 says the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children and heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his suffering in order that we might also share in his glory we must continually gain momentum as we walk by faith treading on serpents and scorpions as we go pulling 
down strongholds as we climb higher and higher. Breaking up fallow ground, establishing winning strategies, feeding the hungry, crushing the devices of the enemy, clothing the naked, healing the sick, raising the dead, opening blinded eyes, and press. Oh God, oh God, oh God. You know what? I forgot to give you the title of the sermon. When I say press, you will know what I mean. If I had given you the title of the sermon. It's called Building Bridges and Saving Lives. The Press. Whoo. Oh my God. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. Whew. This is a great commission. And in it we must be R-E-S-S. Press. We must press. We must acknowledge the promise of, promises of God and keep our promise to God to obey his commandments promises that will lead to victory and provision we must be pray exercising first first thessalonians 5 16 and 18 rejoicing always praying continually giving thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of god for you in christ jesus we must activate engage and utilize God's unequal P, power, supreme in authority, and in victorious in every battle and over every circumstance, challenge and obstacle. We must offer Hebrews 13 and 5 through Jesus. Therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. I said, P, we're on P right now. The fruit of the lips that openly profess his name. We must engage in God's providential purpose, plan and will. His governing force, guiding care and foresight which can lead believers to victory in the midst of adversity. We must persevere through trials and hardships, ultimately leading us to victory, demonstrating faith and trust in God's plan, I said we must press. We must dwell in his peace. God's peace surpasses understanding and leads us to victory over anxiety, fear, and turmoil. And we must posture in his protection, his shield for his people from all harm and alarm, promising victory over enemies and danger. Well, we went from P to R. We must realize redemption. Through Jesus Christ, we are, we have victory over sin and death. We must rejoice in Philippians 4 and 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. I said rejoice. Reminding ourselves that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Remembering to be joyful, patient Patient in affliction, hold up, joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer, considering it pure joy, my brothers and my sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Hallelujah. We must resist temptation, evil, and the scheme the enemy standing firm in the faith we must let righteousness reign supreme pursuing righteousness and living according to God's command we must resolve to restore such a one from brokenness despair and loss we must renew our faith by allowing God to renew our hearts and our minds overcoming spiritual stagnation and despair we must experience reconciliation through Jesus Christ 
and remove separation and estrangement. We must, oh Lord, we must press. We must be saved. We must receive strength. We must be ready for war using the shield of faith. We must receive the spirit, the Holy Spirit that is, who empowers us into victory, guiding, comforting, and strengthening our journey to faith. We must participate in sanctification, the process of being made holy and set apart for God's purpose. Hallelujah. I feel like pressing my way. Oh, I hear John P. Key say, I won't give up. I'll sustain my faith to run this race. I'll press through trials that seem out of hand and too hard to bear knowing that my life is in his hands I shall not faint I will press because I know a friend above all others closer than any brother he won't leave me alone a friend he is my fortress because of him I am so blessed I know he won't he won't leave me alone I will glorify his magnificent name I will press I will press I said I will press I hear Norman Hutchins singing press toward the mark uh, for the prize of the high calling press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling press for the mark, for the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Press toward the mark, for the prize of the high calling. Come on and press for the mark of the prize for the high calling. Press for the mark, for the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Come on, let's celebrate Elder Marshall Kennedy, building bridges, saving lives. What a rich word, packed, packed with information, packed with revelation, and packed with inspiration. Thank God for your word. Don't sit down because we're getting ready to go. What a blessing. Thank you so much for your work, for your study. Thank you so much for taking this assignment seriously. And we are certainly grateful for your gift tonight. Reverend Cook, we thank God for you tonight as well. Reverend Cook looking like one of the young boys tonight too. I meant to say that. Look at him. He looking like one of the young boys tonight. I love it. I love it. Thank God for all of you. Thank God. This has been an amazing week of Power Pack Mondays. And I have just been blessed, been blessed to be able to receive what I have received from every preacher and from every Wednesday night teacher that has taught us and has uh, certainly broken the bread of life. It's been rich. You can't ever get enough word. The more you get, the more you need. And the more you get, the more you want. And I thank God for that. Thank God for all of you that have been consistently being with us every Monday night in our virtual space. We thank God for you, our musicians, everyone that I called earlier. Thank God. And if I forgot anybody, please forgive me because I certainly want to make sure that everybody is appreciated and that everybody knows that they are loved. And we thank God for that. If no one told you, I love you. I love each and every one of you. If you didn't hear it today, you're hearing it from me. Um, and I love you and I certainly thank God that he loves us all he has enough love to go around he has enough love to share with each and every one of us I pray that this month has been a blessing to you and I pray that this week as we talked about it last night yesterday that this week will be a very spiritual week for you that it'll be a great week of uh, revelation and that it'll be a great week uh, of meditation and uh, that God uh, will uh, certainly uh, enlighten you uh, and visit you with his presence. I'm glad that I don't just feel him in church, but that I can be at home and I can feel him in my house. Hello, somebody. 
Yeah, that I can feel him in my car when I'm on the road. Uh, that his presence envelops me. And, uh, and make it special this week. Let this week be a special week for you. Um, and let us not forget the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And we certainly will not forget the power of resurrection as we move towards Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you and we thank you. We praise you for uh, this amazing manifestation of your word and of your spirit through the preached and the taught word this month. We thank you, God, that it's not over yet. Uh, for Wednesday, we will hear another word from our preachers. And so I ask God that all that has been deposited, all that has been planted, has been planted in good ground. We're taking it and we believe that it will take root and in due season will bring forth fruit uh, that will not just be a blessing to us, but to everyone that we come in contact with. Thank you that you have positioned us to build bridges and build lives. And it is not because of anything that we have done, but because of everything you have done. Now tonight, God, I pray that you would grant us safe travel. Dispatch your angels and we pray for a blood covering of protection. I pray, oh God, that you would be a hedge around us uh, so that we get back safely, God. And that throughout the remainder of this week, we would feel your presence, God, even the more. We're expecting that greater things are coming, that higher heights and deeper depths will be achieved, for the best is still yet to come. We give you glory, we give you honor and praise, and now may the grace, the mercy, and the peace of God be with each of us henceforth, now and forever. Let us all say amen and amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Go with the peace of God.